Hi, I'm Dr. Ruth Gotian, the Administrative Director at the Weill Cornell Rockefeller Sloan Kettering Tri-Institutional MD-PhD Program. And for today's student spotlight, we have second year MD-PhD student, Ariana Rabinowicz. How are you? <laughs> Good. So, um, you're a New York City girl. I am. Been Born here my raised. entire life. Wow, and you weren't leaving. No. Okay. <laughs> so, um, why don't you tell us your story of how you chose to become a physician scientist? Okay. So both of my parents work at Bellevue Hospital downtown, mm -hmm. and when I was a little kid, because I'm an only child, and both my parents worked, um, and they worked opposite shifts, so my mom worked days and my dad worked nights, wow. and so I would get out of school, my dad would pick me up, and he'd bring me to Bellevue with him, and my mom would bring me home. So I spent a lot of time at Bellevue in the x-ray department and then just patients waiting. Some of the patients would talk to me because they were like, oh, look, it's a kid. Like, it's let's a talk kid. to the cute kid. Because <laughs> um, they were like in the hospital, they're bored, they're semi-miserable. People mm -hmm. like children, whatever. Right. And so I had a lot of exposure to medical fields. And I was like, this is really cool. Um, people seem to get reward out of what they do. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked the idea of really being able to sort of help people and there's a large prison there's several prisons at Bellevue so there's a prisoner population that people interact with and when I was a kid I didn't understand why there were like why were we doing things for prisoners like they're prisoners they're bad people I don't know I was like five years old so that's right. the five-year-old understanding of what prisoners are right. and so my dad told me like it doesn't matter they're sick and if they're sick you take care of them and wow. so to me it was this very equalizing force and it right. was like everyone deserves this care and it's something that isn't like oh you're rich or poor um or like race lines or anything it was just everyone should have this right and that was something that uh really resonated with me even as a kid and it continued to resonate with me as i grew up mm -hmm. and then in college i started doing like bench research and, and why did you decide to do bench research in i was college? A, i was a biochemistry major and in biochem, they do a lot of spewing information at you mm -hmm. and not telling you why. And okay, <laughs> who likes to be told stuff without knowing why? And so, so you always need to understand. I the always root cause want of to things. know the root cause. I want to understand why. And if you understand why, you can ask more questions mm -hmm. and sort of spread your tendrils of knowledge. Right. And um, being able to do bench research would give me that opportunity. Mm -hmm. is my understanding. And so. I started doing research I think my, after my sophomore year of college and it was amazing. I loved being in the lab, I loved doing bench work, I loved being able to ask my own questions and so when it became sort of closer to that deciding point I was like which of these do I want to do and I started thinking really hard about MD PhD programs after my sophomore year right until I graduated I was in one lab, mm -hmm. like as an undergraduate right. research associate. Right. Um, I did a summer program at Rockefeller in that mm -hmm. time, which mm -hmm. also was amazing. Right. And then I was like not satisfied that I had enough experience to be as competitive as I wanted to be for pl applications, but also just because I didn't want to burn out mm -hmm. when I came to medical school and that's sort of the kind of person I am and mm -hmm. I know that about myself. Right. Um, so I took two years off and I worked as a research tech also at NYU. And then you came into the MD-PhD program full steam ahead. Yeah. All right. And you are now starting your second year, mm -hmm. which is a mix of the basic science curriculum for the first part, and then you do a few rotations before you'll start mm -hmm. your PhD. What are your feelings this year? I'm nervous uh -huh. about going on the wards because the stakes are higher when you're interacting with people. Right. Um, they're not just educational tools, right? They're real patients. Their lives are more important than mine in that instance, right, right. in that interaction. And it's like, yes, it's an educational opportunity for me, but it's like their life. right? And I take that really seriously. And so it's a little bit nerve wracking to be in that position. And then my first rotation is on psych. Mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of nerves there because we haven't learned that part of the curriculum yet. We're in it right now. <laughs> right. So you'll be an expert. It'll be fresh in your mind by the time you actually have to do it. So I'm a little bit nervous just because I don't know what to expect right, right. now from that. Right. But I'm excited as well. Like mm -hmm. the clinical components that we've had so far, small that they've been, were amazing. Um, interacting with patients, it's 
amazing when they sort of when you're doing your job right and right. then people are tend to be appreciative right um because right. you're nice to them and you're not abrupt with them because you're a med student and you have time right right um, so you give them what you have right now yeah so getting into an md phd program is not the easiest process in the <laughs> world uh, with a lot of hiccups along the way um, but almost every single person who's been sitting in this chair who I've talked to has told me that they've had people that try to dissuade them. Am I correct in assuming that you are part of that statistic? For <laughs> sure. Um, I had advisors who were really strong believers that MD-PhD programs are like not a real thing and that I should just go to medical school because medical school is guaranteed money. Right in the long run. And right. I was like, this is a guarantee. Right. This is what you should do. You have all the pre-med classes because a biochemistry degree is the same as a pre-med degree, basically, um, at any school. But you didn't listen to those people. And I was like, that's not what I want. That's not what I want in my life. Um, it's not who I want to be. It's not who I feel like I am. Right. There's a very distinct difference, I feel, between people who consider themselves like medical students, pre-meds, and people who are pre MD PhD, like there's just a there there's nothing better or worse about the two groups, but the people have tend to have different personalities and right. like different motivations. And I felt that my motivations more strongly aligned with those who wanted to do MD PhDs than they did with MDs because that was who I was. That's so those people just became white noise to you. Sort of, yeah. Nice <laughs> okay. And you just forged on uh, with your path. Yeah. Um, which is great. So we're excited to have you here. Now you didn't want to leave New York City. Uh, not really, no. <laughs> and why is that? Um, so I studied abroad for one semester when I was in sophomore year of undergrad. And I went to London, which is probably the most New York city you can get outside of New York. And I wanted to come home. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, so you like the comforts of home. I like the comforts of home and I like the comforts of stuff being open at any time. You're studying until 4 a.m. It's okay because... There's something open. There's something there for you. All right. So you are part of a big class. There are 18 in your class, but mm -hmm. you guys are a tight group. Like yeah. almost every single one of our classes here are a very tight group. Yeah. What do you think makes your class gel so much? Because um, it's a very diverse group. It is. We're, we're really diverse in age. We're diverse in interests, um, religiously diverse, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And... I mean, part of it is, like, there are commonalities in our personalities, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and the sort of dedication to asking why is a really big component for why we all get along so well, right? Because That's we can talk about we can talk about anything, and right. it sort of always boils down to, but can you argue it? Can you explain it? But why? Um, <laughs> And it's great. It's, it's like interesting conversations at four in the morning. It is. <laughs> and we can be at like having a party and we'll just talk about science sometimes or we can. It's not just your class, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or we can sort of be talking about any phenomenon and we boil down to the science. And it's like going from what most of us have had in the past, which is being that sort of weird nerdy kid to being with all of the weird nerdy kids. So that's the normal, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the normal. So like being that weird science nerd makes you like perfect. You fit in great. And you're just it's like happy to be with people who finally get you. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people get each other yeah. here, which is great. So what are some of your favorite things to do now that you're here in the program? In the program? Mm -hmm. Um I really like hanging out with my cohort mm -hmm. um, and also with my med class. We like go swimming, a bunch of people bike and run. My friends are trying to pull me into that bike and <laughs> running situation. We have a lot of athletes. Um, we, uh, like I bake with some of my friends. Um, I was doing the acapella group last semester. We'll see if I go back this semester. <laughs> Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, I am part of the... Wow, Cornell Center for Human Rights, which mm -hmm. I'm sure Andrew probably talked about when he did, did his yeah. video cast because he's much more involved than I am. But but, but that's where we learn that really from 
day one, you're able to work with patients yep. in a very hands-on yeah. way. And Thank then I also like took a role in class council. So, mm -hmm. um, and you were a big sit. And I was a big sit for Gateway program. So, um, which is our summer undergrad program uh, for students who are underrepresented um, or have a disability and want, wish to pursue the combined MD PhD degree. Yeah. So shout out to Gateway. Um, so um, you're involved in a lot. Yeah, I like. I also did two other mentor things. Um, I really enjoy mentoring uh, younger students, mm -hmm. sort of helping them figure out what they want to do and right. help them figure out how to achieve that if there are barriers to uh, access for some reason. Mm -hmm. I especially like helping female students mm -hmm. out because there are a lot of barriers. Right. If you're female in science and medicine and especially in a lot of people's families where they don't really think it is necessary for their daughters to yeah. um, pursue higher education and they're just like, that's not really your point. Well, you had, um, you had somebody who set the bar for you. Yeah. And I guess you're now doing it for the yeah. next generation, which I think is great. So if there are any women out there who um, need someone to set the bar, where would you set it for them? What would you tell them to do? Tell them to do? Whatever you want to do, because you can do it. Um, if there are barriers, you can try and find some other women. You could contact me. Um, my email inbox is always open um, to sort of give you some ideas, um, some guidance if you're having trouble with something specific. Mm -hmm. um, people who've been through it tend to have ideas on how you can get through it. Right. Um, but and reach out to other people yeah. who are like you. So set goals come up with an action plan and contact people who've been through it, maybe they can give you some ideas to help you out along the way. And look, Ariana did it. And there are plenty of people just like her. So, anything else you want to add? Um, hmm. This program's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that I would get in here. Um, it was my dream from the moment that I uh, set foot on Rockefeller's campus. I was like, this is where I want to be, and I was convinced that I wasn't good enough to get it. And Why? because we all put ourselves down, we put so much pressure on ourselves. Why though? And <laughs> so then we're convinced that we're not as good as other people, and I think really high achieving people have a tendency to do it, and it's true for most of us. And I got in, and when Ruth called me, I was like, I remember I, that call. <laughs> I think I might cry. <laughs> so I have to tell you, that's a favorite part of my job is when I get to call accepted applicants and let them know they've been accepted. That's and a I, good day. And then I called my mom and my mom actually cried. <laughs> so <laughs> Great. If you like Ariana's story, please share it with others. So hopefully you can motivate more people to pursue uh, the MD-PhD degree. 